Welcome into another edition of EPAC All Access. Colin McLaughlin alongside me, Spencer Dupuy and Nick Verzellini as we're at the Spring Mills Cardinals football practice here behind the high school. And let's get right into it, guys. A team that went 4-6 and six last season. A team that's very young looking as well this season coming in. But all those young guys have experience from last year because of the fact that they were a young team last year. So it's not big of a difference except for that more experience for him. Yeah, and I mean, you, you put guys in a program and, and you know, we you talk to Coach Josh Sims and it, you know, it's his third year at the helm of this program. You're building a program. We're seeing a lot of, you know, coaching turnover here in the last few years within the EPAC and it really just depends on where your school is when you come in. I mean, obviously, different schools have different places, but, you know, it seems like they had to restart the program really and, and make it Coach Sims' program when he came into the program and now you know, you've got a young nucleus of a team when you come in a couple of years down the road you know you're still building this year you've got a sophomore quarterback who had some great experience last year you're going to see improvement from him but I think overall as a team you're going to see improvement and you know come into four and six last year I think you know maybe they could flip that go five and five potentially or even more wins it just depends on how the EPAC shakes out at sophomore quarterback Spencer being Max Anderson after we saw him last year take over as a freshman during that Martinsburg game. You'll hear from him here in a little bit on EPAC All Access, as well as one of the six seniors in Gavin Jones, a guy that's ready on that defensive side that, Nick, you always love talking about here for these high school teams, and he'll be a defensive end trying to get that edge rush going for the Cardinals this season. Yeah, and we've heard a lot of positive things about Gavin Jones from Coach Sims, so uh, you're looking at a defensive end that's going to have to be one of the leaders on this team. It seems to me like he had mentioned to us uh, that you know the team kind of lacked a, a central leader last year, and I think he could be that guy. Uh, but the defense is going to have to be important, I think, especially when you still have a young quarterback. We expect Max Anderson to make that jump uh, this year in his sophomore year and make a lot of improvements. But... Like I said, you have a young quarterback, so what are things that help young quarterbacks succeed? A good defense, a good running game, uh, that will really help the Cardinals, like we said, maybe improve from that 4-6 and six record and get to 5 wins, 6 wins, and potentially into a playoff spot. Uh, defense will be a, a big part of that. Yeah, and, you know, you look at this schedule for them. They're going to open up against Musselman right here at Cardinal Stadium. And then you've got another EPAC opponent the next week in Washington. And then you're going – you're – you're at Washington and you're home against South Hagerstown. Jefferson comes here on September 16th and you're at Hedgesville, that big rivalry here. Uh, then you go to Frankfurt 10-7. 10-14, you're home against Martinsburg. You go to North Hagerstown on October 20th. October 28th, you're at Albert Gallatin High School in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. And then you have a different home you have a different home team or home final home game this year. That is against University, switching out Morgantown for University. And, uh, you know, University runs a, a more similar style of offense to what you're going to see in the EPAC, so it's going to be a little bit easier for that team, for uh, this team to uh, game plan for them. And, uh, you know, looking at that schedule, it seems to be, uh, you know, last year it was, it was tough for them. But, I mean, it just really depends on how the EPAC shakes out. And, you know, we see Jefferson also schedules North and South Hagerstown. And, you know, we've seen – Frankfurt, I believe, on Hedgesville's schedule. And, uh, you know, University is a team that we haven't seen on anybody's schedule yet. Yeah, I think we'll have a good idea of where this Spring Mills team stacks up after those first two games. As you mentioned, EPAC opponents and two teams that are pretty similar to where uh, Spring Mills was last year record-wise. Musselman was 3-7, and seven, obviously had a ton of injuries, and it was a down year for Musselman, but can they bounce back from that? And Washington was 5-5, five and five, so just one win better than Spring Mills. So I think we'll have a good idea of where this team is after those first two games. And uh, while it may not be the end-all, be-all for this team, it will definitely give us, uh, I think, a read on how competitive they can be. If they were to go in and just beat both of those teams relatively easily, then you might be looking at a really good Spring Mills team. But uh, we'll just kind of have to wait and see. And definitely an exciting unit uh, that 
has a lot of potential. It may not be this year for Spring Mills, but I think they're definitely on the rise and a team to look out for in the next couple of years. Yeah, looking forward to this season, and I'm especially looking forward to that last game here at Spring Mills against University. We remember last season that game against Morgantown, it was a win and in situation for the postseason that unfortunately for the Cardinals, they lost. I would not be surprised if it's the same situation again this year against University, but we'll have to wait and see as we'll take a break now on EPAC All Access. And when we come back, we'll be joined by the head coach of the Cardinals in Josh Sims. Tom, I hit your car with a softball. Did you throw it or hit it off the tee? Off the tee. Whoa, good hit, kid. Good thing we know Cody from Cody's Auto Body. I'll text him now. Oh, Kenna, I heard you hit your mom's window with a softball. Good hit. Keeps me in business. We can get you in lickety split. No sh- Hey, that's a bad word. Shut up, kid. We won't drop the ball on your car. Every repair is a grand slam. Bring your car to Cody's Auto Body. As always, it's Cody's with a T for f- trust. Hey, you can't say that. Welcome back to EPAC All Access. Colin McLaughlin here alongside me is Nick Verzellini and Spencer Dupuy as we're now joined by the head coach for Spring Mills and Josh Sims. Coach, tough EPAC this year. A lot of teams looking to be those playoff caliber teams. How's your team looking to be one of those? Yeah, you know, uh, we're definitely going to be very young. You know, we have uh, uh, six seniors this year. Um, now, most of them obviously, you know, have, have contributed in the past, and a couple of them are definitely going to be our big contributors, and Gavin Jones and Sam Stotler. Uh, but, you know, we're young. And, and now, now in saying that, you know, a lot of these young guys got to play last year. Um, so, you know, the EPAC's always competitive. You know, it's never an easy game, uh, you know, any game you have in this conference. So, um, you know, like I said, we're young, but it's one of these things where we're pretty excited about the kids we got out there. And, you know, when you have such a young team, it means you can build that chemistry in that young. And so by the time those kids that are freshmen, sophomore, juniors get to be seniors, you can have a pretty good team. And, uh, you know, obviously you're building this program. And to have, you know, your starting quarterback be a sophomore yeah, sophomore now, having been a freshman last year, having to play, you know, start. You, you've talked about this to us. Having to start the first game that he had to start against Martinsburg. He obviously learned a lot in that game. And he's going to take that going into this year and all your young guys as well. Right. And, you know, that was kind of the strategy. You know, when we kind of saw what we had last year with, with all the young guys, um, you know, like you said, you can take the negative part of that and say, man, we're young, or you could take the, the the big upside of that, and that's that, you know, if we stick together here for years, you know, develop, you know, uh, you know, every day and, and every season, you know, by the time these kids are seniors or, you know, some of them mean even juniors, you know, you're looking at a pretty solid football team and also a pretty experienced football team. Um, so, you know, you know, I keep saying we're young this year, which we are, but we also, we're not playing very many guys um, that didn't get experience last year. So, you know, even these sophomores, for example, Max, but also these juniors and Nate Graham, um, you know, and Alex Eaton and Isaiah Eaton uh, and Josh Potter, uh, who's also played since he was a freshman. You know, we, we don't have the, those numbers of seniors you generally like to see on a team. Uh, but in regards to experience um, and game time, you know, we have a lot of kids out there that have been on the field. What have you seen from the uh, team in the off season in terms of, I guess, off season commitment and, and stuff like that? Yeah, you know, um, we, we have a lot of multi sport athletes, you know, and I, and I don't say that in a, a negative light whatsoever. So, you know, a lot of the kids that we have out here are basketball players, they're track runners, they're baseball players, they're wrestlers, um, you know, they're shot putters. Um, so, uh, you know, these kids have been committed in multiple sports year round, you know, up there in the weight room, uh, you know, doing the balancing act of, you know, pleasing multiple coaches um, but you know my main thing and kind of my belief on that is you know these kids have been uh, staying active uh, staying in the you know the team environment um, so you know off season wise you know hopefully we should be in pretty good shape with the way these kids are on the constant go with multiple sports you guys went four and six last year how are you uh, prepping to possibly flip that record around or better yeah, again, I mean, you know, last year we recognized very clearly the situation when you're, you're starting a freshman quarterback, you're starting a freshman tailback. Um, 
Uh, so, you know, it was one of those things where we kind of geared up for the for the long game with this team, you know, saying, hey, we might take our lumps a little bit last year to get these kids some experience um, and, you know, hopefully moving into this year and next year and the year after, you know, uh, like I said, we went into the long game. So um, we got these kids their lumps and their experience last year, and we're hoping they can build on that and come in this year and be ready, ready, to, ready to win some football games. And pretty similar schedule this year, except for you flip out Morgan town for university this year and you know both those teams very tough teams so you're getting a, a tough team this year yeah and you know that was one of those things there where university spreads it out a little bit more than morgantown does uh, so it's 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 more of a game that you know we'd be more uh i guess used to seeing in, in the epac um so yeah our schedule definitely didn't soften up at all you know we added south hagerstown um on there as well who's usually very athletic we saw them at some seven on sevens in the summer and there's definitely a lot of talent there so uh, once again we actually toughen the schedule up probably a little bit um, and uh, you know a lot of that goes with you know having confidence in the development of these young guys when you have a lot of young players on the team uh, and some guys that got some experience last year you tend to see a lot of big jumps especially sophomore to junior year uh, even for freshman to sophomore year if you get playing time so who are some guys that have maybe really impressed you uh, in how they've developed from last year to this year? Yeah, well, obviously Max, you know, and, um, uh, you know, we've talked about him so much, uh, but, you know, Max's development, you know, physically, just his body maturing from freshman to sophomore uh, was a pretty big jump. Um, also, too, um, a kid, uh, Nate Graham, who's going to play defensive end, some running back for us. Um, you know, he was, a, he was a physical freak last year, but, you know, he definitely put the work out uh, up there in that weight room um, you know he's probably the strongest kid on our team and also uh, one of the fastest so you know he's you know we're expecting him to be a force to be reckoned with you know um, and one kid you guys talked to today um, who was a stud for us last year but again you know didn't uh, put his foot on the brake you know going from his junior to senior year you know he kept working hard um, as Gavin Jones at defensive end and, and our scrimmage last uh, Saturday I mean he was a beast so you know uh, he's made huge jumps going from junior to senior um, you know, uh, once again, another kid that got some carries for us, had a couple good games last year. Uh, going from sophomore to junior was Alex Eaton. Um, and uh, once again, he, he's made huge strides with his speed um, from his uh, sophomore to junior year. So, you know, we, we've had a lot of kids uh, make some of those jumps. You know, I could keep going, you know, with the kid uh, Todd Claxton, sophomore to junior. Again, his gains in the weight room, his gains in speed and explosiveness in the football field has been pretty special. So, um, you know, we have a lot of kids that have made jumps, and, and, and like you guys said, that kind of goes along uh, with uh, the, how serious they took the offseason. And, Coach, uh, we've talked about how good this EPAC is this year and how it really is almost every year. Uh, you know, you're going to start the year two EPAC games, Musselman and Washington. How is that going to set the tone for your season? Yeah, and it always does. You know, this this will be my third year here now, um, and it, it definitely does. You know, so uh, obviously your first game you want to get started and, and get that positivity rolling, but when you add the fact that it's Musselman, uh, you know, obviously being an EPAC team, but also a rival, you know, that, that definitely is an important game. It's not the end all or be all by any stretch, um, but that's definitely one these kids have circled in their calendar, you know, from last year. Um, and, you know, again, uh, starting out 2-0, and you know, against the EPAC compared to 0-2 is obviously going to be a big thing. Now, in saying that, you know, well, our mindset's towards development and playing, you know, a full 10 game. So, uh, you know, obviously we'd like to get off to a hot start um but if you know something were to happen that that we don't you know we're going to stick together and keep working and get better each week all right before we wrap things up here coach what are your final thoughts oh uh, you know we're excited uh, I think that's kind of the biggest thing, uh, you know, that we're seeing. Um, you know, from last year to this year, there's been a, a lot of changes um, within the program. Number one, you know, this is this staff's first year without COVID hanging over everyone's head. Um, uh, we've added uh, multiple new coaches. You know, we had uh, got a new defense coordinator and Buddy Hessen, um, who's brought uh, great intensity to our football team, um, has really got, you know, gr brought great knowledge and experience uh, to our defense, you know, um, 
Um, so we're very excited on that side of the ball. You know, also, too, uh, uh, another uh, former Martinsburg, you know, uh, standout, his uh, nephew, Jalen Hessen, also helping at the, uh, on the defensive line. Is, is once again, brought good experience um, uh, and some uh, uh, good youth, you know, to our program. So, you know, we've, we've added some new players um, and, as well as new, uh, you know, coaches um, and some new uniforms. So it's one of those things where we definitely, uh, uh, you know, made some upgrades in, this, in the offseason, and we're really excited to, you know, see how this stuff goes. All right. Thank you, Josh Ames, the head coach of Spring Mills. We'll take a quick break and then be back for more EPAC All Access after this. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services, Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Welcome back here to EPAC All Access. Colin McLaughlin alongside me, Spencer Dupuy, and Nick Verzellini as we're now joined by the quarterback for Spring Mills and Max Anderson. Max, you came in uh, freshman year last year, got thrown into the starting spot against a very tough Martinsburg team, but since then you have gotten a chance to grow at that starting role. How's the offseason been so far for you at that starting spot? It's been good. I've really been getting better at uh – Stuff I needed to work on from last season. It's been a really good offseason for me. And, you know, we talked about you getting kind of thrown in there last year against Martinsburg. Does that kind of make you feel good that you were able to at least have a decent game against a really tough team, a team that won, went and won the state championship? Of course. Martinsburg is top in the state. And me being put in that game and not doing not doing bad and held, held my own there in that game was really good for me, and I really felt good about that game. What were some things that you wanted to work on uh, during the offseason? Well, stuff I need to work on during the off season, off season was uh, being able to read defenses and going, having progressions for my routes and concepts during the game. How do you think that you've uh, improved on that stuff? Oh, good. Uh, Coach Law and Coach Sims really been helping me this off season, uh, giving me sheets, reading over playbook, uh, and just giving me progressions and uh, stuff on the papers, and really been helping me a lot. What has it been like for you uh, getting to work with your receivers? How's that uh, partnership between you and them looking so far? It's really good. They come here to work every day. Every practice they want to work and get better. And all, for all of us, we really just want to get better and show what we got this year. And uh, obviously this year you're entering the season as a starting quarterback. Are you ready to go? What's this training camp been like for you? Oh, it's been good. I'm really excited to go out and work with my boys. We've really been working hard. And after our first scrimmage, we did really good as a team. And our defense looks amazing out there. I'm really excited for our team this year. And EPAC opponent to start the year against Musselman, uh, you know, going right in against a, a team that seems to be coming back and ready to go. So it's going to be a tough opponent week one. Yes, of course. I'm ready to I'm ready to ball. So my team, we're ready to go. Who have been some guys that have uh, really stood out to you on the offensive side of the ball? Offensive side for the ball, uh, kids that stand out. Jason Schreiner, uh, he's really good. He got really good route runner. He can route, run routes good. Uh, Zach Bender, he's also a good slot outside receiver. He does does both. Um, Keon Mills, he's really good athlete. He's uh, a young guy too, right? Yeah, he's young. He's in my grade, sophomore going into sophomore year. Alex Eaton Jr., he's a really good running back. And uh, this new guy that came in named Cam, he's really good and really good running the ball. He's going to be good for us this year. What's the goal for the team this season? Just go out and ball, compete, and win. All righty, thank you, Max, as we will take a quick break here on EPAC All Access and then be back for more. You've been in an accident. Why won't the insurance company pay? Because they're trying to save money at your expense. Call Mansion Ferretti for your free consultation. We have the experience to deal with the insurance company and get you the compensation you deserve. Mansion Ferretti, when you need justice. Welcome back to EPAC All Access at Spring Mills High School Practice as we're now joined by defensive end and tight end Gavin Jones from Spring Mills as it's Colin McLaughlin here alongside me is Spencer Dupuy and Nick Verzellini and Gavin 
about a week away now from the start of the season. How's the uh, defensive side looking for you guys this year? Oh, we're looking real amazing right now. We had a uh, great scrimmage down at North Marion the past week, and um, we're all looking very solid. Our uh, new defense is doing great with uh, Coach Hessen, both Coach Hessens on there, and uh, I feel like we're looking real solid for the season. And uh, you're a senior, so uh, ready to go this your final season. What's your mark? What do you want your mark to be on this program? Um, just hard work and leadership. That's all I've been trying to do for the past couple of years. So. And Gavin, you guys have a young team. You're one of the few seniors on this team. Uh, so what have you tried to do as a leader to help get those young guys that got a lot of playing time last year, uh, just more experience and, and more uh, confidence heading into this year? Uh, mostly just keep the team together. Unity was a big thing compared to last year. Last year we didn't have a uh, single specific leader, and we weren't always uh, like unified as a team. And uh, this year I feel like that's a big change with the whole entire team is uh, just everyone coming together and working hard for the name next to you. You're also a tight end for Spring Mills. Are you more of a uh, blocking tight end or receiving tight end, or is it a little bit of a mix for you? I would say I'm more of a blocking tight end. So I've been uh, playing that position since sophomore year. However, the past two years, I've always been behind uh, Nolan Chenier. So. What's the team mentality heading into the season? I know you guys are building up this program again. Uh, what's your expectations for the team? Our expectations are to get to the playoffs. That's been our goal since day one this year. And I think we're all working really hard to get to there. How do you feel about the uh, other defensive linemen at, at your position group? Um, I know in the past, Spring Mills, maybe what they lacked was some size on the D-line. Uh, how do you feel about this group? I feel like this year group has to be one of our best uh, D-lineman groups we've ever had here. Uh, just as far as the size and skill that we have uh, Anthony Williams in the middle, as well as Josh Potter, who also switches in there. And then on the edge, we have Profit and um, Nathan Graham, which Nathan Graham started at defensive end on the other side last year, and uh, he did very well. So now we have Profit coming up, too, to help him out. We've been around all the other EPAC schools, and each time we've asked the uh, question, the expectations, each one has been playoffs. Yes. How are you guys going to make sure that it's your team that gets into that playoff spot over some of the other EPAC schools? Uh, our goal is to be one of the most conditioned teams this year as far as putting the work in on and off the field in the weight room, everything from that to uh, just working hard. Yeah, start the year if an EPAC matchup uh, in Musselman. Um, what's that game going to be like for you? Um, I think we're all looking forward to it. Last year it did not go as we wanted it to, and uh, we're all coming back for revenge this year. All right, thank you. That was Gavin Jones joining us here on EPAC All Access. We're going to take another break and be back for more. You've put up with your water long enough. It's time for Sunset Water Services, your local water solution since 1989, to fix your water problems. Get better tasting, better smelling, and better looking water today. Say hello to drinking your own delicious water for pennies per gallon. Say yes to healthier skin and hair and to softer and brighter clothes. Sunset Water Services delivers your bags of salt to you, so they'll save your back too. And our products come with a one-year satisfaction guarantee. Call 304-754-9031 for a free water quality test today. Sunsetwater.com. I'm not used to this. <laughs> Try to stay out of your way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Full sprint, Max. There you go. There you go. Downhill. Yeah. You go. Good. Good. Hey, speed was good. First step was good. Right over You're ending up over there, though. Right. Just make sure you're following. That's good. So I don't know if this matters. I'm going to break the fifth wall here just to tell you what we're seeing. All right, so that's our offensive coordinator. Marcus Law right here okay right now we're just going we're doing group O running through all of our plays run or pass just making sure everybody knows their responsibilities with with the way this goes because uh, again he's offense coordinator so he's running through this we also have our JV going opposite back here doing the exact same thing mir mirroring plays um, so again just everyone's on the same page so if somebody goes down on the varsity side whether it be through injury or what not whatever now we just transfer, they just move from this side to that side. And uh, that's pretty much what goes on with, with team as well. Right now, this is just what we call group. Just to go through maybe some of our players, right here's Keon Mills, uh, returning slot receiver and running back. Uh, 
here's a junior's uh, Zach Bender. Um, uh, coming back from last year, great tackler on defense as well. Um, that running back with the red pants on, which which I'm going to call him out here because that means he forgot his pants today. So he's got the red pants. That's Alex Eaton. Um, uh, in far side, there's Tristan Davis, also a great track athlete for us. Um, and as we were talking here, running back, defensive end, uh, Nate Graham, also a very good track runner and wrestler. Did you forget your pants today? No, I just found these. Uh-huh. Yeah, don't even. No, 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 no. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Hey, remember, that's just token. Just token. Take it and shoot it. The back coming across is plenty enough. Right. No, it's RPO. So you, you, it wasn't just tunnel. No, like it's our read. Okay. Hey, you got straight tunnel here? Or is he reading something? No, it's L Dallas. No, it's L Dallas. He's coming to us. Okay. If you know you're going, just get it out. If you know you're going, get it out. Huh? Ready to go. Yep, get that get that thing out if, if you know you're going. Get it into that guy's hand, lame run. Hey, red, 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 tunnel left, red, tunnel left. So the discussion there is are we coming straight to that? Is the quarterback making a read or is it a pre snap call? If it's a pre snap call, you want to get it thrown out there as quickly as possible. Yeah, that's what I want right Yep. Give him, give him the momentum to the block. Yeah. Hey, wax. Wax. Hey, wax. Go. Yep. Are you done with the break out there? You will get wrecked. Now, if you look over here real quick, this is a, a, a freshman quarterback, Rylan Schwartz. We're uh, real excited about him. Good, good baseball player as well. Get rid of this thing quick, Rylan. Right off the break. Uh, he ran that wrong. Hey, make sure you take that all the way to five. Hey, make sure you take that to five or you're way too close to this back coming in the flat. You see what I'm saying? Make sure you take that five and out all the way to five because you and that back were way too close out here in the flat. If you're in an accident, the first thing that you have to do is call 911. You have to get medical care immediately. The next thing you need to do is call us. When you hire us at the Skinner Law Firm, what we do is we are gonna investigate your case, and we're gonna lay out the options that you have, all at no cost to you. We will use all of our resources and all of our experience to get you what you deserve. The Skinner Law Firm, skinnerfirm.com. Hear from every EPAC coach every week on the Sports Mix this fall. They really showed that they have a lot of grit. They can play with just about anybody. That's the culture that we've been building here at Washington High. You know, our senior leadership stepped up and said it's playoffs are bust for us. Pretty much the same thing we've been saying since day one. Stay humble, stay hungry. They never solidify some things. I really think the key for our team is the control. They do some things that if we're not ready, they'll be the team that's sitting there at 500 at the end of the night. The Sports Mix, weekdays from 12 to 1 and re-aired from 5 to 6. Welcome back to the final segment of EPAC All Access here at Spring Mills Cardinals Camp. Colin McLaughlin alongside me is Nick Verzellini and Spencer Dupuis. And guys, as we wrap things up here, what do you guys like from the Cardinals so far during this practice, Spencer? Well, being able to see practice here is, uh, you know, we were able to do a bunch of stuff. You just saw the mic'd up segment and, you know, something pretty cool about the way that Josh Sims runs his, his program and his coaching staff is that he has a true offense and defensive coordinator. What I mean by that is the offense of coordinator calls the plays and he's just the head coach. You kind of see it in, you know, some NFL style. Uh, of uh, coaching systems and uh, you know during that mic'd up segment it's something that you, you won't see throughout the rest of, of the Z-Pack All Access is, is that the, he was kind of explaining some stuff uh, to, to, to the audience because he doesn't have to call the place he's out there evaluating what's going on yeah, and I think uh, that's kind of a different coaching style than you see typically at the high school level, but it really just depends on the coach, you know, how they want to run things. Um, some coaches will take control of an offensive unit or the defensive unit, and some guys rather kind of oversee everything, and uh, that seems to be how Josh Sims is running this program, and uh, it's definitely kind of different, but I think it is a 
offense can be successful if you have those that confidence in your offensive and defensive coordinator to really handle that stuff and you just kind of handle who's playing where and stuff like that and the other issues that head coaches have to deal with. Yeah, and, and you know, the OC, uh, we were ta- I was talking to Coach Sims off camera there, and uh, he played with the OC at West Virginia. They played at WVU together, and then the defensive coordinator, you know, most people in the panhandle will know Buddy Hessen, uh, who was part of that initial run at Martinsburg, putting that initial staff together along with Coach Walker. Yeah, this team's a very young team as well. Only six seniors in total for this Cardinals team. So it'll be interesting to see how they actually are this season. We've heard from each team that they want to get to the playoffs. And we've said other than Martinsburg, each team's a question mark as if they're going to get into the playoffs or not. I think the uh, out of all the other schools that we've heard from, Spring Mills probably has the toughest task to get to that playoff spot because they are the youngest yeah they are the youngest but they're building upon things and you know and this may not you know they may be able to sneak in the playoffs this year but i know that the ultimate goal is to build a bigger program excuse me and uh getting these guys experience this year you'll see the difference as nick mentioned earlier at the beginning of the episode you see the difference from year one to year two year two to year three uh but by the time these guys that are freshmen and sophomores now get to year three and four i think this team could be a top contender in the epac and one thing that does stand out is they're a little bit more physical this year they're a little bit uh bigger you know watching a lot of the offensive and defensive line drills those guys were going at it pretty hard so i haven't really seen sleds much action at, at practice as we've been to but you see that here. yeah they were doing Mills. the sleds they were doing some one-on-ones working on pass blocking uh and pass rush so there was some good uh work in there and uh like like I said, I think they're a bigger team than maybe they have been in the past, and they can kind of match up a little bit better with the Martinsburgs, the Musselmans, uh, Jeffersons, you know, schools that always have big, strong kids. Washington this year has a ton of big kids, and so does Hedgesville. So it's a big, strong conference, and, and in order to match that, you need to have a big physical team. And I think this year's Spring Mills team, you know, having those sophomores go into junior years and freshmen go into sophomore year uh, and juniors obviously jumping to senior year, you know, those kids have gotten bigger, stronger, faster and allows them to potentially have a really good year. Uh, but it's only year three for Coach Sims. Like he said, it's his first year of really a normal off season. So you could almost say it's only like year two really. Uh, and we'll see how he's able to kind of develop these guys and how good the Spring Mills team can be. Uh, but they'll definitely be competitive and, and a tough team like they were last year. Yeah, and I think these first two weeks will set the tone uh, starting this season against Musselman and then playing at Washington. I think those two EPAC teams are going to set the tone for the season. I mean, you have North and South Hagerstown on the schedule, Frankfurt on the schedule, Albert Gilton out of Pennsylvania, as well as University on the schedule. I think those are going to be some tough out-of-conference games that are going to help them in the EPAC. Yeah, young high school, a young team that you can tell is right on the verge of something special here at Spring Mills, and that's going to wrap things up on this edition of EPAC All Access for Josh Sims, Max Anderson, and Gavin Jones, as well as Dylan Bishop, Nick Verzellini, and Spencer Dupuy. I'm Colin McLaughlin signing off. Keep it tuned to TV10 for all your local high school sports coverage.